Now let's talk about the future perhaps and that is the electric vehicle momentum. So we've just touched on that with the i8 and the i3 from BMW but the global market leader in electric vehicles at the luxury end of the market you'd have to say is Tesla. And this one of course is based in Palo Alto in California and it is the brainchild of a fellow former South African. That's why everybody loves this company down here. That's Elon Musk. And of course the vehicles they produce, they're three different kinds. We'll talk about that in a bit. They've been in the news in recent times with their newest Model 3 launch. $31.38 billion market cap. Not small at all. Price to earnings ratio, infinite because it has not made a profit and dividends don't make me laugh. So, I mean, this is the exciting company that everybody loves to talk about. The sales are very small compared to these other titans, but uh, people believe that if Elon Musk touches it, it's just going to go to the moon. Yeah. Isn't he an ex Pretoria boy's high? Yeah, he yes, is. I, th I thought he was. Younger yes. than me, though, I must <laughs> say. You, we didn't overlap at school. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, we, one must be a little bit careful about these uh, renewable energy companies, and because they're into batteries as well mm. in, a, in a big way. Wonderful, innovative, but America particularly is littered with, with failed renewable companies. Mm. Now, I'm not suggesting for one single moment that's going to happen here. Mm. Um, and if you look at what happened with the, the S, the, uh, the, the $70,000 uh, So vehicle. the S is the basic model, yeah. right? That's the nice looking one that people can currently buy. Yes, expensive. Mm. Yeah. Um, that's done exceptionally well mm. and competes head on with some pretty luxury vehicles. Um, in America. You know, we perhaps are not so cognizant of it here because we, we haven't got such a, a big, we haven't embraced mm. um, the, this type of thing at all, but the Americans really have. And now with the, the launch of the, of, the, of the imminent launch of the three, when I say imminent, towards the end of next year. So there's year. the S, then there's the X, which is the sort of SUV with yep. the gull wing doors. And the Model 3 is a smaller one that yep. looks more sort of modest size. That's coming at a cheap $35,000. And it's only available in another End year or year. two or something, right. but people are already pre-ordering them are like huge. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he's certainly created the hype. Uh, the technology definitely works. Mm. The question now, is the demand going to be great enough? And it's been particularly difficult because we've got oil at a kind of, I wouldn't say historical yes. low, but a, but a, a, a recent low. Yeah. And in that sort of 30 to $40 range, it, does that make... Okay, the, so uh, let's that, just uh, go into that. Some people say, well, when oil is cheap, that's bad for Tesla because then, uh, you know, no one can be bothered buying an electric car. I've heard an alternative argument, though, is that why that's good for Tesla is that all the other motor manufacturers in that environment then are less likely to come after Tesla, giving Tesla more opportunity to dominate in that market. So I don't know, I suppose it could cut both ways, because Tesla is a premium product that really yeah. only rich, you know, environmentally oriented left-wing people in Los Angeles are going to buy, right? Yeah. Well, that's right. And <laughs> I, and I, and I, but I think, I think the attraction is going to broaden. Beautifully somewhat. made yeah. cars. Yeah. I, there are even stories like in Europe now they're being used as taxis and people love them because they're very well made and the, the range of the tech of these cars is somewhere around sort of 200 kilometers or something then it needs to be recharged but then they also have the supercharger stations you can go to. And you recharge quickly in about yeah. half an hour or something like that so it's good. And that brings in the battery thing. So currently they have the battery manufacturing capacity necessary to supply their fleet but they're building a new big gigafactory in like Arizona or somewhere which will manufacture many more batteries and in the process then they'll also be able to make more of these power wall things that's where you buy something to put into your home which draws power when it's cheap and gives it back to you when it's expensive yeah that's right so at the end of the day I love the technology here and I think it is going to succeed and I tend to adhere to your your second argument here that uh, because the other big money manufacturers were probably going to continue to yes. concentrate on the, the, the fossil fuel uh, mm. vehicles, I think Tesla's mm. largely going to have this space to themselves for a while, a while yet. Let's have a look at the share chart because here we have a company which a lot of people think is ludicrously overvalued. So I know, you know, when you look at the stock, there are about 133 million shares in issue, of which apparently about 30 million already are out short, short interest, which means that they've been borrowed and people have sold short. So those short sellers got very excited at the beginning of this year because they thought they were winning and now the share price has turned around from about $150 all the way back up to 240 So they've really been hung, drawn and courted. And the launch of the Model 3 created extra excitement. So I don't know. I mean, I bought some of the stock of this thing when they were about $30 a share. And obviously it's been a good one to hold, but it does feel a little bit like a high beta roller coaster, a stock which could, you know, really, really do well, but it could also inflict some serious damage because if it has production problems 
or if Elon Musk, you know, decides he rather wants to do something else and loses interest in Tesla, this could be a problem. Yeah. Look, I think it's one of these things, you know, you're obviously taking a bet on it, but I think, as I said before, the technology is great. And I really do think that uh, the new products that are going to be rolling mm. out are, are going to uh, differentiate themselves, head and shoulders from the other than the others. And then what about the exit uh, conversation? Because there's some speculation, and I know it's probably just rubbish that people dream up, uh, that Apple might buy the company. Or because Google, or yeah, whatever, yeah. Well, that would be even more of a stretch. But I mean, Apple, the idea is that Apple makes things, right? And they've got great brand and great design, and so does Tesla. So why don't you put it all together, and then you could have the Apple, Tesla, and it'd be the same thing. Or possibly someone like BMW or like, you know, Daimler, Chrysler, Benz, whatever would come for them. At which point they would be buying the company at a premium, acknowledging that it gives them immediate entry to the luxury end of the electric vehicle. Yeah, it's got to be a target, absolutely. Yes. So therefore... I mean, I know we don't normally say hot on the basis of potential deal or acquisition, but it is perhaps an interesting case in no, this case. No, yeah. and uh, as you rightly say, and if and when that happens, the premium, I think, will be mm. substantial. Mm. Okay, good. So we've got to bring this to a close. I can't waffle on forever. Hot or not? Oh, I'm hot on Tesla. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and it is interesting. So am I. As I said earlier, I do own some stock, and we do buy them occasionally for clients that are investing in the U.S. because it is a company South Africans like to own, particularly if they have a slight environmental bent or a car fundies. Good, there we go. So hot on Tesla.